The ignition options and wheel decoder settings. This is um, split into about three or four boxes in MS2. In MS1 you get quite this, this large uh, in MS3, sorry, you get this large settings box with everything in it. Um, so this is very similar for MS2, uh, MS2 Extra. So we, this is set up for a tooth wheel, but you've got, I mean, I have described most of these. EDIS, obviously, if you've got an EDIS module. not That's not to be um, mixed up with just having an EDIS coil pack. That's an EDIS module, a 12-pinned black module. You have EDIS multi-spark mode of EDIS, um, not used that one before but I believe some of the EDIS modules can multi-spark. Uh, basic trigger is for um, distributors when you've got uh, just uh, four pulses per revolution on a four cylinder off the cam, off the distributor. Trigger return again for distributors when you've got um, a falling edge and a raising edge um, signal from the distributor so you can have trigger return modes. Tooth wheel, that's for 36 minus 1 wheels off the crank, um, 60 minus 2, you know, Vauxhalls, Fords, all the normal standard wheel decode and stuff would be tooth wheel. Uh, then you've got other modes which are specialist modes for um, certain engines like the Subaru 6 plus 7, the M Mazda MX-5, uh, G6, uh, 6G72 cr uh, cam sense, uh, sensors. Um, that's a Cosworth sensor set up. Um, all these trigger twin trigger is for two distributors setups. The Rover um, K series has three modes, three different types of crank signal patterns. So there's three there for them, and so on and so forth. F fuel only if you're only going to do fuel, um, no no crank signals. Uh, so you just have pulsing off of the distributor and no, um, you've got no worries at all about any of the dwell or anything to do with sparks it just turns all that off and so on and so forth so anyway we're going to go to toothed wheel for now um, skip pulses, how many pulses the t how many teeth the um, the ECU ignores when trying to crank it over that'll ignore the first to three or however many you want but three is a normal sort of um, figure that's just it ignores them three until it's then it starts locking on to a, a more regular uh, pattern so three four five six is sort of norm uh, ignition capture this is um, basically the the way the um, trigger falls within the ECU how it depends on how it's wired uh, I generally want hall sensors so they're falling edge so if you've got a 5 or 12 volt hall sensor that'll be falling edge if you've got a VR sensor they're wi I wire them so they're rising edge so if you've got a 36 minus 1 wheel with a VR a Ford or Vauxhall sensor then that'll be rising edge if you've got um, some of the Volkswagens use a 60 minus 2 wheel and they use a hall sensor on some of them that'll be falling edge uh, spark output is if you've got spark drivers uh, within the ECU, built into the ECU, um, which most of you will have if I built it, and uh, that'll be inverted, high, going high inverted. If you've got external spark drivers, um, if they're spark drivers I've supplied, that'll still be inverted. If they're built in to your coil packs, then you'll have to find out if there's a high or low signal needed. So um, the LS2 coil packs, for instance, um, use inverted. Some use going uh, going low as normal. Um, you'll just have to find out which way around. If you're not sure, you just put your hand on it. If they start getting hot, which they should do quite quite quickly, then change this around. Be careful not to um, allow them to get too hot. Number of coils, a single coil for distributor, waste of spark, wasted coil on plug, that would mean you'd have four spark outputs. The ECU would be driving four spark outputs on a four cylinder or eight on a um, eight cylinder, but it would only be driving them in pairs, so that would be wasted spark, but you'd be using eight or four or however many cylinders you've got. Um, whereas this on a four cylinder would only be using uh, two spark outputs on an eight cylinder that'd be using four spark outputs whereas this uses double the amount but it fires them in pairs that fires them singularly but it's connected to a pair of cylinders 
pull and plug is um, for sequential mode. So on an 8 cylinder, you'd have eight sparks, uh, eight, eight puts fired, one at a time. Uh, four cylinder, obviously, one at a time on a, on a coil and plug. So that's the difference between these two. That'd be firing them in pairs, this would be firing them sequentially. In order to run sequentially, you must have a cam signal, a suitable cam signal, and a crank signal, or a two or a suitable cam signal that can cover the crank signal. So if you've got a 36 minus one wheel, you can't run sequentially without a cam signal. Then dual distributor, dual dizzy is for um, uh, the Lexus engines and the like. So I'm running call and plug. Hardware, if you've got um, on the MS2s, you've only got these two options, JS10 and LEDs. Uh, I always use LEDs, unless it's EDIS, then it's JS10. The just 12 pin module, uh, so we'll always set LED spark unless you've got the MS3X card uh, that you're using for spark. Then obviously, you select the MS3X card. I'm using the MS3X card on mine, but um, most people would be using the LED spark if they haven't got the MS3X card connected, or if I've uh, built in um, spark drivers into the ECU that be LED sparks. So if you're not sure, give me a shout. <coughs> MS3, this is cam input. This is the cam input. Um, not to be mixed up with the um, main input. This is for when you've got two signals. So for instance, a 36 minus one wheel on the crank and a one pulse off of the cam. This would be where the cam would go in. So uh, on an MS3, you've got a cam input. Uh, on an MS3X card, you've got a cam input um, circuit. So if you haven't got the MS3X card, it'll be JS10. Now that's only if you're using uh, two separate inputs. So if you've got one input um, for your cam, for your crank or your cam, one pattern, then you can ignore this bit. But if you've got... Um, if you've got two signals, then one will be the main one will be on pin 24, which is the red wire within the grey screened cable I supply. That'd be like your your main pattern in, and then your cam input would be. Um, so if you had a four plus one, your four would be going in on the uh, red wire on the grey screen. So that'd be your main input, and the one trigger input uh, would be going in on JS10 or MS3 X cam input. Hope that makes it reasonably straightforward. And this here, a single wheel with missing tooth means um, it's just one one pattern going in. So uh, 36 minus one wheel. So it's a single wheel with a missing tooth. A dual wheel would mean um, two wheels, one with neither with a missing tooth. So you'd have a say a 60 tooth wheel without any missing, or a 36 tooth wheel without any missing, or 16 and um, also a cam signal for the uh, that give you one or two pulse per revolution probably one pulse per revolution that be going in on JS10 so the, the uh, main wheel would be on the red wire and the grey screened and uh, this separate cam signal be on JS10 or MS3X cam, cam in input and then dual wheel with missing tooth is basically 36 minus one wheel on the crank or 60 minus two or something like that with another wheel input um, which is, could be a cam, would chance that will be a cam input um, for the uh, for the single pulse off the camshaft. So again, that'd be cam input JS10 or MS3X. So just to recap, single wheel is just one pattern, one tooth, one sensor in. Dual with, and that would need to have a missing tooth. Uh, because otherwise the ECU wouldn't know where it is so that would have a missing tooth dual wheel is when you've got um, two pa two patterns going in one without a missing tooth and the other one the, the main one without a missing tooth off the crank uh, say 24 pulses or something like that and uh, and, the, and another input from the cam and dual wheel is with missing tooth is the cr main crank pattern has a missing tooth of some form one or two or whatever 
main wheel speed uh, crank or cam you know self-explanatory so crank on if you've got 36 minus one on the crank that'd be crank if you've got a 24 plus one on the um, cam then that'd be cam that would be dual wheel that would be 24 and then you'd have to alter the angle depending on what, you know, what your time marks told you so that would be like a 24 plus one so the um, MR2 setups something like the Toyota setup so go back to what mine is minus one cam crank Burn. and then this is just whether or not that um, the second input the cam input is um, rising or falling edge depending on what sort of sensor you've got and everything use table or fixed time and I have explained all of this in some other ones but fixed time is if when you're setting up your um, timing for the first time you, know, you use a strobe set the fixed time at 10 degrees so the ECU just fires it when it thinks 10 degrees is and then you can alter this tooth angle tooth at number one angle until the strobe lines up at 10 degrees and then you know you've got the right value in there I have explained that in another video somewhere starting for the first time or something like that then go back to use table which means that the timing will be altered by the uh, ignition advance table uh, use first derivative pr uh, prediction the ECU is quite clever it can decide when it, using the previous um, timing, uh, engine speed and timing uh, uh, values it can work out roughly when the timing should be made um, uh, for for itself so it, it predicts basically when the, and uh, that's a good option to have as, for, as on so we use first prediction crank and dwell self-explanatory that's what the dwell when it's cranking when it's uh, trying to start up before it starts Crank in advance. Uh, some engines like uh, less advanced, some like more. On a, uh, when you're trying to crank it over, eight tens a norm. Uh, mine like sixteen for some reason or other. Um, Toyota multiplex. Well, you'd know about that if you had that. Fixed standard dwell is uh, time dwell in milliseconds. So that's what you'd always have if you had um, ignite as built-in dr spark drivers. You'd always use standard dwell. If you use fixed dwell basically it's a percentage so um, it, it turns the, the pulse width on and off for 50%, 10% but you're not going to use that unless you're in um, um, EDIS mode and that's all set up for you anyhow as soon as you select EDIS mode um, that should automatically, there you go, automatically know what it's doing so it knows that um, you're not going to have to mess about with dwell in EDIS mode so back to tooth wheel standard dwell and then for a like a ztec or a, most coils are about three three point six milliseconds mine have got built in igniters the, i use the ls2 coils coil on plugs and they like about five to five point five milliseconds you'll just need to find this out if not there are ways of finding out or ways of testing it but uh, most of the information's out there somewhere and d spark duration Generally, it takes between half a millisecond and one millisecond for the spark to fire. Uh, that's just so as it can work out um, dwelling positions and timing positions and all sorts of things. So it don't, doesn't, doesn't over dwell and things like that. So uh, that number is not critical, but uh, just put it at half to one millisecond and that should be fine. Uh, this is only to be used if um, you have sparking issues. I've not had to use this myself, so I'm not going to worry about this too much. And then spark trim if you want to add, um, if you want to advance or de retard each cylinder individually, but you'd need to really know what you were doing and have the right equipment for that. So we'll leave that off. So if I just go back to MS2 quickly, that's covered there. Tooth wheel, blah blah blah. Skip pulses, rising or falling. Going high inverted, that's waste spark coil and plug. Uh, JS10 or D14, so you'd have D14, that's an LED, so that's, that should say LEDs. So that's it, most of the um, everything all bar EDIS. EDIS is JS10, so if you're in EDIS mode, that blank that grays out, but make sure it's on JS10. But everything else would be 
D14, which is the LEDs, D14 being the first LED. More ignition settings, this is your derivative, your table, fixed table again, set the value there for your strobe, crank and dwell, standard dwell, fixed dwell, again all, all as we described, it's just MS2. And um, I think that's it.